that. You use it for four. She's Jeannie Epper, 37 years old, happily married, and mother of three. That's her daughter, Erlene. This is her youngest child, Curtis. And this is her son, Richard. She's always lived in Los Angeles, except for the time she spent at a Swiss finishing school. Her parents sent her there to learn everything she'd need to be the perfect wife and mother, and above all, a lady. Sometimes you wouldn't know it. I think my dad and mom had different ideas for me, really. She's a Hollywood stunt woman, and has been for 19 years. Here she is again. She's the one in the dark wig. It's not exactly what many of us would choose to do for a living, but she's obviously in it for more than the money. It's a great feeling. It's a challenge, an accomplishment. I've only, oh, maybe once or twice in other areas have I felt quite as fulfilled. Do you remember the first stunt you did? Oh, yes, very, very vividly I remember it. It was a saddle fall. And it's a saddle fall is when you uh, get shot off of a moving horse. Now, you did that stunt at age what? 18. Fair to say you were hooked after that? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Jeannie Epper's attraction to stunt work should not have come as a total surprise to her parents. Like her brother Gary and her sister Stephanie, as a matter of fact, like all five of her sisters and brothers, Jeannie did as her parents did, not as they said. Her father, John Epper, was a Hollywood stuntman for almost 45 years and worked on approximately 200 feature films. When Gary Cooper or Errol Flynn or Ronald Reagan jumped horses off cliffs, chances are it was really John Epper. And before she had her six children, her mother, Frances, was a stunt woman. And if you haven't guessed it yet, yes, there's a third generation of stunting Eppers. All three of Jeannie Epper's children, even young Curtis, are in the stunt business. In the circus, you have the Walindas. In the world of stunts, it's the Eppers. Do you work as a family sometimes now? Yes, we've done several films. My sisters and I did a film called The Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean, where we had the horrible task of beating up Paul Newman. <laughs> Paul Newman comes to this little town where I think there's three buildings, and we are a bunch of motley-looking crew. We are, we're hookers. Bean, Roy Bean. Maybe you heard of me. My picture's on the wall. We kind of think he's cute, only we're horrible looking. We've got black hair and eye bags, really bad. So we think we're all right. We think we're pretty good looking, and we try to put the make on him. Buy me a drink, bank driver. And he doesn't want any part of us, so we beat him up. <laughs> was that fun? Yes, it was fun, except that I was, since he's my island, I've always just worshipped him. I think he's a... I just always think he's great. I didn't want to hurt him. I had to elbow him in the stomach, and my younger sister, Stephanie, has to kick him in the, well, you know where. In a vital place. <laughs> right. And she, her, it was so funny because she said, if I miss Joanne, I'll never speak to you again. <laughs> but she didn't miss. <clears throat> I come back later in the film, a hooker again, but now I'm a very cleaned up hooker with red hair, and I'm a fancy lady of the night. And as they're all walking into the saloon to have a, a drink, he grabs me and puts his arm around me and starts kissing me. Well, his little girlfriend comes out and she shoots a gun at us. I jump on a horse and ride out of town. Pretty good line of work for most women to have to kiss and be kissed by uh, Paul Newman? I was so nervous, I couldn't believe it. My stunt didn't even bother me, but kissing Paul Newman had me totally unnerved. <laughs> and one, two... Generally, though, the demands of her work are physical. Surprisingly, she does nothing very different from the things the rest of us might do to keep in shape. Timing, agility, and judgment. Those are the talents, she says, are the most important. And she says it was her childhood, filled with dancing, tree climbing, and rodeoing, that prepared her for stunts like this fall she took for an actress in an episode of Barnaby Jones. This gentleman jumps out from behind a door and puts his hand over my mouth, drags me over to the side, and throws me over a balcony. There was no gentleman. <laughs> Were you frightened with this stunt? No, I wasn't frightened with the stunt. It was just... No, no, I wasn't frightened. 
something sort of comes over you, a sense of peace, a sense of, of you know you can do it. You know you're not going to get killed doing it. The couple times that I've been hurt in the business, I knew I was going to get hurt. Tell me about that. Oh, once I, was, uh, I got caught on fire. I was doing a fight inside of a building. They dropped this burning beam down on top of me. I was pinned underneath and I'm caught, actually caught on fire, it burnt my hair off. And it's funny, just before I did it, right after the director hollered action, I knew something was going to happen. I wasn't quite sure what. You didn't get that calm feeling that things were going to go well. No. And I got hurt. And this happened once before. What was the other time? I was doing a fight with an actress and she had to take a picture off the wall. And it was one of those, like a velvet picture with a Mexican heavy frame, big frame. Right. And it's a big, it was a huge picture. I had told her about four times, make sure when you take that picture, take a step before you hit me with it. And I knew she was going to hit me with the edge of the frame. I split my head open. The cameraman loved it. My blonde hair, the blood running down. They kept the camera right on me. But pretty, I knew I was going to get it. Pretty realistic stunt. Uh, yes. <laughs> but realistic stunts aren't in as much demand as they were in the heyday of westerns and television violence. So the best thing that can happen to a stunt person today is a steady job on one of the remaining action-packed television series. And Wonder Woman provided just that opportunity for Jeannie Epper. For the last year and a half, she's been the regular double for Linda Carter, the star of the show. She gets to do all of her favorite things. I know my neighbors think I'm nuts. They say, well, what are you gonna do today, Jeannie? And what do you tell them? Whatever's coming up, we hit by a car or whatever. And then they wait to see what condition I'm gonna come home in, of course. <laughs> Cut! This is the Wonder Woman set. And here she is sizing up her assignment for the day. The script called for Wonder Woman to jump through a skylight. Her pay would be the day rate of $225, plus a negotiated bonus, something they call an adjustment, based on the difficulty of the stunt. Coincidentally, the director, Alan Crossland, was her director on that first fall off a horse 19 years ago. Okay. Can we bring the airbag in now? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ron Stein was the stunt coordinator. As a rule, on a show of that size, or almost all your action shows today, you have a stunt coordinator who goes in and sets things up, you know, pre-production. They set everything up beforehand. And normally, you know, you depend quite a bit on this gentleman. He knows his work. So you don't really have to go in yourself and set it up. But we still do check things out. What do you think? It's going to break you the from that, my body anyway. From that height, I think, I think you'd be better off if you straddle it. If I straddle it? Yeah, I really well, do. Okay. What are they doing with that? Yeah. Yeah. They're taking it back. If they have to, it'll be in the future. That's they, what I'm jumping the on. The sky backings is... Do they know well, I'm a postage stamp? That? That's all it is. But they're moving that, and that's what. Whoa, I'm... guys, be careful! But that's what I'm jumping off. Do they know that? Whoa, whoa, they're whoa. taking my. I don't think they. Okay. They do know that's what Jeannie's jumping off of. Come on down a little more. Tip it down. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, stay up there. We'll work it out. Uh, we'll work it out. I think the worst thing that can happen to a stunt person is to get ready David? and weather goes bad. Get ready, the camera goes bad, you know, whatever goes bad. Uh, and then David. you really do, you start getting a little drained because you pump for it. I know I pump very, very, you know, get ready, your adrenaline really builds up inside of you. You get right to the point of doing it and the director says, cut. Well, then you kind of come back down again. And, you, you know, it drains you. The airbag, which would cushion her fall, was properly inflated and then up to the platform for the final stages of planning. The last minute check to see what it looked like from above. Joining them was her friend and advisor, fellow stuntman Bob Yerkes. When she crashed, when she hit it, and just remember to, when she break through, then just stretch out for the mat. Okay. And don't fall forward. Try and as you go down, concentrate on falling to your side. Okay. Well, you can't think negatively. You know, once you've set it up, in the, in the director hall's action, you better have it all together. You can't make a mistake. And roll it! Action, Jimmy! Cut it! You okay, babe? All right. Here, give her a hand. Boy, you came through the right to the bricks. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Look, look, look. look. Hey. Oh, 
Don't don't rub. Don't rub. Right. Don't rub. Right. Need to make up. She's got glass in her face. Let's get go. that stuff right. off. You want to do it? In general, how does your husband put up with this business? Uh, he's been super. I don't think I could have gotten as far as I have if I hadn't hadn't been really. He and I have sort of a pact. It's like he respects what I do. He knows I'm capable. And his attitude is, I don't want to come and watch you. Get it, honey. Call me from the hospital. And it's a very healthy attitude. Okay. She's got a ton in her neck all through the Blow it off. How do you answer people who say, you must be crazy to do this line of work? Oh, I definitely think that is a piece of the ingredients. Being a little crazy helps? Being a little crazy definitely helps.